What's up everybody, Taylor here with another tutorial. Now that we've talked about both motion blur and depth of field in Redshift for Cinema 4D, I thought it would be a good idea to go over best practices for applying the two to your scene together, whether that's using AOVs or baking them into your render. All right, let's get into it. So when you're applying motion blur and depth of field to your scene together, it's best to use the same method of application for both. So if you're going to use a depth pass for your depth of field, then you should also use a motion vectors pass for your motion blur. The same goes for if you're going to do it in render. If you're gonna do your depth of field in render, then you should also probably do your motion blur in render as well. As far as the render speeds go, generally rendering with AOVs is going to be faster. Mainly that's because if you're gonna render both motion blur and depth of field, you're gonna to have to throw more samples at your scene in order to clear it up. So think to yourself, do I have time to re-render this sequence? Is the client going to have a lot of notes regarding the final look of this? Then maybe the flexibility of using AOVs is gonna be better for you. You're gonna be able to make changes faster and turn it around quicker. But maybe you want the best looking image possible and time isn't an issue for this. Or you have access to a render farm, then adding both depth of field and motion blur into your render is probably gonna be the best option for you. So now let's talk about compositing for a second because nobody really goes over the correct order of operations operations when applying these effects. You're going to want to apply your depth of field effect first and then motion blur over that. Now if you look here you'll be able to see that in this render I applied the motion blur first and the depth of field second and you can see that there's this slight halo effect going on around my objects and that isn't what I want in the final render. It's very subtle but if you zoom in closely you can see it very clearly. Now if I go back and I switch the order of the layers so that the depth of field layer is first and the motion blur layer is second, you'll see we get a nice smooth motion blur effect around the edges of our objects. So that's it, another quick video about motion blur and depth of field. If you found this video helpful in any way, please throw me a like down below and I will see you in the next video.